Welcome to Oral History, How to Interview and Preserve Voices. I'm Rhonda Lauritsen. I'm the founder and an author biographer at evalog.life, where we've been doing oral history for years, and we also have a group of professionals who are doing um, interviews of others. I also want to mention right off the bat that if you would like to get the uh, printables and the slides and all the resources that I mentioned in this talk, go ahead and go to this URL, evalog.life forward slash oral hyphen history one. If your life were a movie, what would the soundtrack be? The soundtrack to my childhood was my dad singing. He would sing in the kitchen while flipping pancakes. We would sing in the car. We had cowboy songs around the campfire. He sang love songs to my mother and hymns. Well, when I was about 19, I was away at college, homesick, and I showed up on my parents' doorstep on Christmas Eve, surprised them. And with me that trip, I brought my boombox and I asked my dad if he would sing into a cassette. He did. I gave copies of that cassette to my family, but I tucked the original away for something like 20 years. And I finally got it digitized, pulled it out, and this is the result. Then come sit by my side if you love me. Do not hasten to bid me adieu, but remember the Red River Valley and the cowboy that loved you so true. This is my wife, and I want to talk a little bit about her to begin with, because without her, I'm zero. I'm pretty good on the ideas, but I ain't very good on the follow through. I, I can I've always considered my wife a very beautiful woman. I've never considered her cute or anything like that. She's always been gorgeous or beautiful, and she made me want to do better. And that's why she's the spark. That is the power of voice. In about 90 seconds, you get a pretty good idea of who my dad was. When you hear someone's voice like that, it's like they're back in the room with you, like they were never gone. There's something incredibly powerful and intimate about voice. This is a picture of my daughter. And I show you this picture because I couldn't have known when I recorded that cassette all those years ago that one day I would have a little girl who would never get to meet my dad in person. And the way that she knows him is through his voice. And because I recorded that cassette, now she has the opportunity to listen to that tape. And it's the soundtrack also for her childhood. I've added this additional picture because my mother passed away this fall and while she was dying we, we sat together for many hours. It was a sweet and beautiful time and we played that cassette over and over. It was the soundtrack for the best times of her life as well and it was soothing and brought my dad back like he was in the room. So I would ask you a question. Whose voice would you give anything to hear today? I'd be willing to bet there's somebody. This is my grandfather. He served in World War I, and because of the big age gap in our, the generations of our family, I never got to meet him. What I wouldn't give to hear his voice. Someday, your voice may be the one that someone would give anything to hear. Also, don't forget the little voices. Those children in our lives are going to grow and change, and that little voice won't be around forever either. Now I just want to briefly share some experiences of people that we've worked with. Because oral history preserves voice and stories. One of the best things I did was have you record my dad. I'm so glad I have it now that he's gone. 
Rachel was superb at asking questions we never would have thought of discussing. Thank you for this treasure. Thank you for helping us record our stories. Our son found one of the best presents ever. To say I am pleased, happy, and grateful would be understatements. I now have a book. I never would have done this by myself. I meant to for years. Patty wanted to leave a story for her daughter. She, Patty, passed away just three weeks after finishing. So we interview people professionally, which seems like maybe it would be awkward. And the question is, so do people really open up and tell you their life story? And the surprising answer is yes. Now, sometimes it works beautifully to have uh, the interviewer be someone they know. So if you, you're watching this and you may want to interview people uh, in your family, which is wonderful. But also, if you want to interview somebody that you don't know, give it a shot because sometimes people will open up to a stranger in a way they won't with their own families. I don't know if there's a sort of anonymity to it, or maybe it's just because we're a new audience and we've never heard the stories before. And so they will, uh, they'll share it with us because it's brand new. Now I want to shift gears and get into some of the specific things that we've learned in our professional work. The first thing is that questions are key. We always try to give people questions in advance because it gets them thinking, and even though we don't use the questions that we give them as a rigid plan, we let the conversation go where it goes, and we allow spontaneity, we allow ourselves to be surprised, but still, people really do appreciate getting some questions in advance. So this is a printable that we have on our website. I will email you this if you go to that URL. We have lots of other questions that you can find on our website as well. And I'm going to share one of my favorite questions. That question is, what is an object you've had since childhood? We love to ask people questions about their childhood. People just light up when they talk about their hometown, the food they had when they were growing up, family traditions, and there's something about the objects that we've carried with us for a lifetime that evoke rich and wonderful memories. I have this picture of marbles here because when I look through a marble, it's like I'm five years old again. Something else we've learned, and this may be one of the most important things, so, so take note here, and that is to embrace silence, to allow for pauses, ask a question, and then wait. Wait for the answer to come, even if the silence seems a little awkward. Just give it some time. Let your subject think. Just be with the silence. It's okay. So along those lines, there is one word that is the very most important word that you can possibly know while doing an oral history interview. I learned this word from my husband. He is a quiet man. And so the word is this. Hmm. 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 Just a little bit of verbal affirmation is really all you need to give to show your, the person that you're interviewing that you are listening, that you care, that you are intent without interjecting yourself in the conversation. Try it. Another tip if you are doing an interview in person is to be sure and bring a water bottle, prepare in advance, use the restroom before you get there so that you won't be distracted by anything, and also bring tissues. There is a very good chance that there will be crying. This is another one of those weird things that I didn't expect. It just sort of happened enough times that I started to take note of it. And the tip is this, leave your recorder on until you're out the door. Same goes if you're doing an interview by the phone or by Zoom, leave the recorder on the entire time because the good stuff often comes when you're putting on your coat, when you're getting ready to walk out the door and they think of one more thing. I don't know why it happens, but it does. Finally, in this talk, we're going over ideas and equipment, questions, get you all prepared for with all of the details, but please don't get overwhelmed. The most important thing 
is that you just do it. It doesn't have to be perfect. If you do it now, it will be enough. When I interviewed my dad all those years ago, I'd never done an interview before. I'd never done anything like it. I just turned on the cassette and that became a priceless treasure. So please don't miss the opportunity because you're waiting for it to be perfect. Okay, now we shift gears to a part of the presentation that I think is really fun. We are going to talk about the kit, the basic things that you need to record an interview. At a minimum, you need a way to record it. Now, you can use an app, you can use your computer. I personally am a big fan of digital recorders, especially if you're doing interviews in person. You don't have to spend a lot of money, but these little babies are great. They have a gazillion hours of recording memory. It, be sure to get one that has the USB connection right in it so that you slide the little lever and the USB port just pops right out. That's a great uh, time saver. You don't want to be hunting for cords. That's a pain. They have great sound quality and they're just easy to use. So again, I'm a big fan of a digital recorder. You don't have to use this one. We use, we've used an Olympus, other, other types, but this is just one. You also uh, can greatly improve the sound quality by adding a microphone. So this is a little lavalier mic. Um, and that little thing that looks like a fuzzy, like a lucky rabbit's foot is, uh, it's a windscreen. So if you're recording outside or you want to minimize popping sounds, a windscreen is a great way to get good sound quality. They're, they're not very expensive. Okay, now I want to talk microphones. This is an article I wrote where I go into great detail. So these are a bunch of different types of microphones I use. The first is a lavalier mic. You can put this into a digital recorder, into your phone, even into your computer. Keep in mind that there are different connections, TRS and TRRS. They fit in the same port, but be sure to check your connection because if you have the wrong connection with the wrong uh, device, it won't work. We love apps uh, on your tablet, on your phone, or your computer. So here's an article where, where we've reviewed a bunch of different apps. You can connect uh, your digital recorder into a tablet or phone um, and just click on the, the recording app and get great sound quality. So there's a little lavalier mic. Oh, I love, love, love my business headset mic. Uh, it has phenomenal sound quality to isolate noise and background. Uh, so I use my headset literally every single day. So that's my phone, just connect it. I also love my podcast microphone. It's the most expensive mic I have, uh, but it just has the most rich, beautiful sound. So if you're recording at your phone or in Zoom, that's a great way. So go to that article. I've reviewed a ton of different microphones and I try to keep that article up to date. Okay, if you want to record phone calls, there are a couple of ways to do it. One is that you can get an app on your phone. I think the apps are getting better all the time, but I have to admit that I've found them to be a little buggy. The, I had an app that I loved and then it stopped working for Android. So uh, you can go to our article about apps and see the very latest ones that we like to use. There's another really cool device that you can get. It's this little uh, cord and you plug it into a digital recorder, put the earbud in your ear and it will record the sound from your voice and through your ear in your earpiece. It's weird, I know, but it works. It's pretty inexpensive and it's a great way to record phone calls with a device instead of an app. I just find that to be a little more reliable and I also use it as a backup. Okay, this is one of those things that I hate to admit took me a long time to figure out. And that is, if you want to get great sound quality while recording two speakers, uh, how do you do that into one device? Like, let's say you're interviewing a husband and wife and you want them to both show up on the recording. You will need two microphones, a splitter, an extension cord, and then you will plug that cord into your uh, tablet, your phone, uh, whatever, maybe it's video or your digital recorder. So that's the setup. I hope that helps. Once you've completed an interview, it's important to transcribe it. 
Now, I love audio. I love the voice because it's intimate and powerful, but it's also important to get those words on paper. Print a copy of it. That way you'll have it in case anything ever goes wrong with that digital file. It's lost or the file type gets corrupted. It's just important to have a hard copy. Also, if you're going to write a story from the interview, it's way easier to have a transcript in front of you so that you can see where they talked about something and use their own language in the story. So now I wanna talk a little bit about how to transcribe audio. We have several different tools. I gave you this URL here, um, evalog.life forward slash transcription, because I've given uh, just a ton of detailed information about how to transcribe audio that there's just not time to cover in a 20 minute talk, um, but it's important, so check it out. One tool I do want to share with you is called O-Transcribe, that's O, just the letter O, lowercase O, transcribe. It's a website, so this tool is free. It's open source and it is browser-based. And the reason I love it is that it mimics a dictation machine. If any of you out there ever learned how to do dictation, you will appreciate the foot pedal, the rewind function, the fact that you can speed up and slow down the audio. Uh, this tool will save you a ton of time if you need to listen to the audio and physically type it up. In addition to O-Transcribe, in the last year, there have been tremendous breakthroughs in the world of machine transcription. Now, there's still a place for humans. There are people who still do this for a living. Uh, and if you wanna send it to a human, I would encourage you to do so. If you're doing it yourself though, you may want to use one of the machine options. Uh, and so on, in the article, I've walked through a bunch of the really neat tools that are just getting better and better at speech recognition all the time. Who could have possibly imagined a year ago what social distancing would do for uh, technology and all of us getting comfortable with being in front of a camera at our desks? Older generations that a year ago had never used any type of video technology are now really comfortable with it. So this has opened up a whole new world of interviewing and we've seen it work really well in our business and with our clients. This has been a breakthrough because in the past, I've not really been a fan of interviewing people with a video camera and the reason in addition to the fact that it's time consuming and difficult and the files are hard to edit. But in addition to that, I found that you just don't get the good stuff when there's a camera rolling because people tend to be on guard. They've, they've stiffen up and they're just not as natural when there's a camera going. But the thing about social distancing and these new video chat technologies is that people are getting comfortable and because they can see your face while you're talking, it becomes much more of a conversation. And so now we can actually record the video with just a push of a button. The files are already saved to our computers and there are even technologies that we can add on. For example, you can do an add on to Zoom so you get a real time caption and you can execute export automatically a transcript of the interview. Mind blown. Wow, that was a lot of technology really fast and it didn't even scratch the surface. So I hope that you will sign up for my email. I will send you a bunch more resources, a tutorial. Uh, also, I teach a five-week class on this to professionals if you're interested in that. Um, but I don't want you to feel overwhelmed by the technology because there's something way more important about the gadgets and, and all of that stuff. And it is this. Listening is sacred. Nothing else you do about whether it's the app you use, the microphone you use, the questions you ask, none of it really matters compared to the way you listen. This is sacred ground. When you listen with your whole soul, I mean the kind of conversation where you're 
like in a restaurant with somebody and it's like the the whole world just melt melts into the background and there's nothing but you and that person and the connection is so deep that they open up and they tell you things that is a sacred process and i would encourage you to listen with that in mind when you do an interview forget everything else. Don't think about yourself. Don't think about the next question. Don't think about the technology. Plan in advance so that you can be more than present, so that you can connect with that person and give them validation, empathy, and love. If you do that, everything else is going to be okay. And you may be blessed by hearing some of the most amazing, profound things that ever happened in somebody's life. It is a profound privilege to interview another human being, and I would encourage you to to try it. It will change you, and it will change them. In closing, if you want the treasure of someone's voice tomorrow, you need to interview them today. Whose voice will you capture? But remember the Red River Valley And the cowboy that loved you so true In closing, I invite you to sign up so that I can send you the tutorials, the printables, and all of the resources so that you can interview your loved ones.